In this lesson, we will look at the different options to add redox calculations to the problem. And we will also take a more detailed look at the different options for calculating the pH. Uh, but we start with redox and you can find that there is a redox menu up here. Uh, but uh, before we start using that, we, we will define a problem that illustrates how to add these redox reactions. And we can imagine that we have a water that has a pH of 6. So, so I'll start with uh, defining the pH as fixed at, and then we enter the value of 6, so 6.00. Then let's say that the temperature is 25 degrees for simplicity. And then also that this water contains iron at a concentration of one milligrams per liter. And what we wonder is about is uh, what form of iron is the one that we expect to predominate in the water. Uh, so we enter iron. And we see here then that there are two components for iron. We have Fe plus 2, which is the reduced form of iron, of course, and we have iron plus 3. Uh, and at this stage, it doesn't matter which one of these we, we choose. Uh, the, we will uh, calculate with a program later on which iron form that predominates. So, so let's just uh, select iron 2. We change then the concentration unit to one milligram per liter, or two milligrams per liter, I should say. And then here in the total concentration uh, text box, we enter the figure one. And then we click add to list. So now we have one milligram per liter of iron there. Uh, maybe it's not really realistic that we have iron and nothing else. Uh, we, we can also define, for example, a salt electrolyte in this one. So let's assume that we have some sodium ions and some chloride ions and that we have one millimolar of each. So to do that, we change the concentration unit to millimolar or millimolar. Uh, sodium is Na plus one. So we find this in our uh, component list. And we add sodium one millimol per liter, click add to list, and then that's in, in our uh, problem. And then we do the same for chloride. So we find chloride in this component list here, Cl minus one, one millimol per liter, and add to list. Okay, so now if we click on view edit list, that's so far we have then these different components defined. Iron, we see now that the program has recalculated the one milligram per liter that we provided to uh, millimolal. So, so we have this number, it's approximately 18 micromoles per liter of iron that we have uh, defined in the water. Okay, uh, now the tr uh, problem is then to, to uh, uh, make the prob uh, program calculate how much of this is iron 2 and how much is iron 3. And to do that, we need to use this redox menu. And what we do here is that we specify redox couples. So we select this alternative. Uh, you have a number of different redox couples here. And the one that fits the description is this one, IM plus two to IM plus three. So let's add that. Uh, we accept these different uh, equilibrium constant and reaction enthalpy, and we just click add. So we enter it to the problem. And what happens then is that we get this message box uh, because uh, Visual Mint also like to um, uh, fix the electron activity in this situation when we define a redox couple. And to start with, it uh, has defined a PE value of nine. Uh, we will accept that for the moment. Uh, we'll get back, get back to change that to, to the one that we want later. So uh, now we have added this ion redox couple and we can go back now to the main menu. Uh, then, uh, of course, we have this uh, PE equal to nine than the one that Vision Mintic defined for us. Uh, we will probably need to change that. And we do that from here, from the parameters menu, where we have an alternative uh, specify PE and EH. And PE then is the um, minus logarithm of the electron activity 
and the EH is the redox potential. Uh, these are describe basically the same thing, so it's just different numbers. Uh, so instead of the PE value, we could as well define the redox potential. And then we can also calculate the PE or the redox potential. And that could be of interest in certain situations when, for example, we know both the ion plus 2 and ion 3 concentration in the water. And if we do that, we can actually calculate what the, what the redox potential or electron activity should be in equilibrium. Um, but this, that is not in our focus now. We, let's assume that we know what the electron activity is. Uh, and we can start with a fairly low number. So, so let's assume that we have a PE value of zero. Uh, that is sort of fairly reducing conditions. So we have PE zero, and then we click Save and Back to Main Menu. Okay, so let's now see what we have defined. So if we click uh, this uh, component list, we see that then we have, apart from the ion 2 that we defined initially, uh, we have also ion 3, of course, we need to have that when we have this redox couple. And we have the electron activity, which is a present as a separate component here. Now, if we go to this one, this list of fixed species, we can see that, of course, we have a pH uh, fixed. So this is why it's present in this list. We have the redox couple. And then we have the electron activity, which is fixed at this value of zero that we defined. So we get back to uh, the main menu now, and then we click Run Mintech. So, um, okay, so in the results, we see, of course, we have the pH and the PE value that we defined, and we have the detailed list of species. Actually, the uh, uh, sort of best overview we can get of the results is uh, to start with is if we click Equilibrated Mass Distribution. Because here we have summed up all the different ion 2 species and different ion 3 species. And then we can easily see here that it is ion 2 that predominates. And basically it accounts for nearly 100% uh, of all the ion in the water. Uh, I mean, there is a, are many, basically seven orders of magnitude difference between the concentration of ion 2 and ion 3. And we can also see uh, that. Um, uh, yeah, that is uh, bringing us to one thing that I forgot to do in the previous calculation. And that is that ion 3, of course, has a tendency to precipitate. So if we have enough ion 3, we can form our ion oxide. So if we had defined ion oxide, we could uh, maybe see that some ion oxide had precipitated in case we had enough ion 3. And that is one thing we would like to do, in fact for iron, because iron-3 uh, is not very soluble in the water. So let's go back and do that. We have the solid phases and exclude the species menu here. Uh, and then we can uh, let the program uh, precipitate iron oxide if it needs to. That is, if we have enough iron-3 in the water. So, so we specify possible solid phase, uh, possible solid phase. And then, as we could see in one of the earlier lessons, we can enter the first letters of ferrohydrite. Uh, and then we find ferrohydrite here. We accept uh, the equilibrium constant, the reaction enthalpy. We add ferrohydrite as a possible solid. And you can uh, find that in these lists here. It's now present as a possible species. Here we find our ferrohydrite. OK, so we rerun this problem once more to see if we actually could form any ferrohydrite. And uh, if we had formed any uh, ferrohydrite, we would have seen that here because we would get a button here. Uh, we don't. And we also, if we click equilibrate mass distribution, we see there is nothing there. So under these conditions, at these fairly reducing conditions, where ion 2 predominates in the water, we have very low ion 3 and therefore we don't uh, precipitate any ion oxide at all. OK, so then we can safely say that ion 2 predominates in the, under these conditions. Uh, what if we have a higher PE value? Uh, OK, so to answer that question, we can go back and we can enter another uh, value here of the PE in this text box. So instead of 0, let's say that we have PE equal to, to 5. OK, so that is 
well, not so fully oxidized in condition, so it's sort of uh, weakly oxidizing maybe uh, conditions under the, uh, the, uh, when we have a pH of 6. Uh, so we click save and back to main menu and then we run the problem again. And now we can see a difference here because now we got this button amount of finite solids. Uh, what it means is that we were able to precipitate for hydride under these conditions. And when we click that you can see that uh, well, we have all basically almost this 18 micromoles per liter of iron in, in the ferrihydride form. So this means that uh, basically all of the iron that we defined is now ferrihydride. If we click the equilibrated mass distribution, we see that uh, in fact in the water uh, it is still iron 2 that predominates. Uh, but the concentration here well, that is basically 0 0.2 micromoles per liter is much lower than the one we defined initially. And the reason for this is that most of the iron is actually formed a ferrihydrite, which is iron 3. Uh, so that's 99.98% of all the iron 3, that is uh, ferrihydrite. So does iron 2 or iron 3 predominate? Well, that depends on whether you only look at the solution itself or if you look at the whole system. So if you just focus on the dissolved phase, it's iron 2 that still predominates, but if you look at the whole system, it is iron 3, because uh, the most of the iron 2 we had initially has formed iron 3 and precipitated as an own ferrihydrite phase. Okay, uh, so then we go back. So this demonstrated uh, basically how we can uh, use uh, the uh, uh, redox options and remember that you need to use two different menus. You need to define the redox couple from here and then you need to change the setting for the redox potential or the electron activity from the parameters section here where you specify P and EH. Okay, so it, uh, now we're done with the redox. For now I think we will reset um, Visual Mintech before we start with the next thing, we just to take a, a deeper look at the different pH uh, options and more specifically the different options how to calculate the pH. We already looked at the fixed that option, that means that we know what the pH is, but then we can also calculate the pH with these two different methods. So we'll illustrate how these work by uh, assuming that we have a solution with one millimolar of acetic acid. Uh, and then we will calculate what the pH is in that solution. We start with this option, calculated from mass and charge balance. Uh, and then we add, try to add our acetic uh, acid. And uh, if uh, we start just uh, we click the component list now we won't find it because acetic acid is an organic component so we need them to tick this box and then uh, acetate appear which is the component for uh, acetic acid so we can form acetic acid from acetate okay we had one millimole per liter of, of acetate so we can enter the figure one here and then we click add to list now if we look at this uh, uh, component list we see okay we have hydrogen ions and we have acetate. Acetate initially has a charge of minus one and a hydrogen ion of one. Uh, so initially we have of course defined an anion but we haven't defined a lot of cations or no, no cations at all actually. Now the principle of this option here when we calculate the pH is that we will make sure that we have charge balance and the way we shall mean to does this is that it will either add or remove hydrogen ions until we get a charge balance. Uh, so uh, this difference in the, in the concentrations will hopefully then even up when we look at charges. Uh, so if we click run Mintech now, that is what we, it will do. And we will get a pH of 3.91, which is then the sort of expected pH of one millimolar of acetic acid. Uh, and then you can see, of course, we have charge balance here. So we have as much uh, cations, which, which, which is dominated by the acetate anion. 
as we have cations and then hydrogen ions. Um, okay, one thing to note here is that uh, it took 520 iterations for Mintech to find the solution, which is quite a lot. And what it shows is that uh, this is sort of a rather computationally demanding way for Mintech to calculate the pH. Of course, what it does when it uses this option is that it will, uh, the Visual Mintech will guess a pH and then step by step uh, find what the pH is at charge balance. And this is more easily done if you have, can supply an initial guess that is close to the final solution. And uh, you can actually do that when using this option. And uh, you do that by clicking view edit list and then the list of fixed species. And here uh, you see the blue text here, the hydrogen activity, hydrogen ion activity will be adjusted to ch obtain charge balance. And so what this value is, is the initial guess. So you see by default, uh, it will start at pH seven uh, because this is now the log activity hydrogen ions and that corresponds to pH seven. Uh, that is rather far from the pH 3.9 that we got in the end. And so it's quite likely that if we change the initial guess to something closer to, to 3.9, let's say that we, we choose pH 4, uh, it will be easy for the program to find a solution. Uh, so if we do that, uh, we go back, we click Mintech. Now we see that it's just 149 iterations. Um, Okay, in this very simple case, it didn't really matter because we got the solution in the end anyway. But in more complicated situations, when we have a lot of more components defined, this does matter because then sometimes you will not be able to reach uh, uh, the solution. You will get an error message and then you will need to fiddle around with these initial guesses until you get the point where, where you get the uh, uh, charge balance. Okay, so this was the one of the options. Uh, now, if we instead choose the other option here, calculate from mass balance, this implies as you, uh, that you can guess maybe that uh, you, Visual Mintech will not consider the charge balance explicitly in any way. So if we go back to our problem, we have our component list. We have these acetate anions, one millimole per liter, and the hydrogen ion zero. And this means that we have a charge imbalance to start with. And you shouldn't have that basically when you use this mass balance option because this imbalance will remain also when we have run the Mintech. Uh, so we see the large, large difference in, in the sum of cations and sum of anions. And the pH that is calculated is 7.87. And we know that is not correct. Uh, because we know that we should have charge balance uh, and that is sort of very important to get the right uh, pH value towards the end here. So this is a solution that we can't, uh, uh, well, we can't accept. So uh, what we need to do when we use this option is to make sure that we have as many cations or as many cation charges to be precise as we have anion charges initially. And in this situation, we can achieve this by simply changing the hydrogen ions. So we have one millimolar of hydrogen ions and one millimolar of acetate. I mean, that is what we have in acetic acid, right? That is what we get if we react one mole of acetate with one H plus, and then we have acetic acid. So that is what we should have initially when we use the pH, this pH option. So we go back now and we run Mintech. And then you get the solution that we had expected, the one that we saw when we used the other option, this pH of 3.91. And you can see that the number of iterations now is just 44. Uh, so this means that it's much easier for Mintech to find the solution when we use this pH option, which can be a significant advantage. On the other hand, when we got complicated problems, uh, it might be difficult or even impossible sometimes to know or to balance this uh, initial solution properly to start with. And then you might need to use the other option. So that is why yeah, you have these two different options present in, in Visual Mantic. And I hope this 
gave you some more insight in how to use these different pH options. Uh, so this, mean, that this means that we are done for this lesson. We have taken a look at redox and pH options. And the next lesson we will be looking at adsorption. Thank you.